Hello there folks, DJ Bergstar here back with another tip of the day. So today I want to talk about envelopes versus LFOs and the similarities and the differences and how they're used and how synthesizers in general have these parameters sort of no matter which synthesizer you're using they all have a different sort of UI, but they're doing the same concepts with these envelopes and LFOs. In general, an envelope happens once. When you strike a note or a chord, it will trigger that envelope one time until it hears another note that you trigger, and then it will trigger the envelope again. An LFO, however, is sort of indefinite. It will continue doing its LFO whether you're striking another note or not. And so there are some similarities and differences that way. Also, you can set an LFO to actually re-trigger and that's where it can be sort of similar to an envelope in the sense that when you do strike a note, it's kind of rewinding the path it was on and starts again, even though it's an LFO. And so there are similarities and differences. But let's take a look at what I've set up here. I've chosen three separate synthesizers because I just want to show you that they're all doing the same thing with these LFOs and envelopes. They just have a different UI that you're looking at. So let's look at my first one here. It's a wavetable. And a lot of people use wavetable, including myself. And it's an instrument in Ableton Live. And you can see here it has envelopes and it has LFOs. And the second instrument is a Serum. And now I know that um, this synthesizer is a plug-in and it costs money, but um, a lot of people use this. But it's a good example of another synthesizer that's using the same thing. Here's the envelopes and here are my LFOs. Serum actually has more envelopes and LFOs than a lot of other synthesizers. It's a very good plug-in. Um, and the third one I've chosen is a very simple synthesizer that was created by Ableton here called Acid Machine. And in this case, I had to add a separate LFO and a separate envelope because the machine itself here, the synth, does not have those parameters. But it doesn't mean we can't do the same thing. So let's start with the wavetable. And what we'll do is we'll just play around here and show you how the envelope strikes at one time and the LFO will continue. So we're just for now going to be changing the frequency here uh, using these parameters and modulations. Okay, so let's start with the envelope. So here in my matrix, I can sort of tell it how much percentage um, I want it to look at of any of the parameters I want to modulate. So I'm going to click on frequency and then I'm going to come to my envelope here and say alright I'm going to want this envelope to to control this frequency. So let's put it up to 100%. Actually let's listen to it by itself first. So this is what it sounds like with nothing happening. Watch what happens when I throw on this envelope. Now that's extreme because I've set it to 100%, but I could lower that. See what it's doing? Every time it strikes, it starts again. Let's compare that to the LFOs. So I'm going to hit 
frequency here, and this time we're going to use the LFO. And let's use LFO 1 first, and I've set that to a rate of 2 bars. And let's see what that does when I, well, let's hear it by itself first. There it was, and then as I increase this, see that? It's very similar to this envelope too. See the similarities? I can change the shape, however, on my LFO to, let's say, a square wave, and it will just do this ramp bump. You know, it, it won't do the nice wave, it just jumps from this position to whatever position I have set here. So, in that way you can start to see the differences between the LFO and the envelope. Okay, um, and of course I can have two envelopes running, maybe on the second LFO um, or envelope I can trigger something different. So let's say I wanted to start working with the resonance as well. Um, let's choose envelope 3 um, for the resonance. So if I have it with nothing, and then if I turn this up, you'll see that notch there, that's the resonance. I can make that higher, or maybe even get it into the negative. Okay, let's turn that off, and we'll use the envelope, um, sorry, the LFO2 here to do the mod uh, modulation there of that resonance. So here's the resonance, and this time we'll use the envelope. I keep saying envelope when I mean LFO. Um, there it is, the resonance doing its thing. And again, we can maybe change that so it sharply turns on and off. On, off, on, off, depending on the rate I had it set to. Okay? So, that's how the envelopes and LFOs are sort of being modifying or modulating any parameter you want. I just did the frequency here and the resonance, but almost anything. You can do panning, you can do the volume, you can <clears throat> have this wavetable moving up and down um, with one of these LFOs or envelopes as well. Let's try an LFO on this um, uh, wave position here. Uh, so here's the wave position. Let's get LFO 1 on that and watch what happens. See this starts moving because it's using this LFO. If I had set that to one of the envelopes, it would just do it once. See? One time, that's it. Starts again. That's how the envelope works. How do you modify the envelope? Well, here's how fast and slow that's going to happen here. You can, these are the sort of ADSR controls um, in an envelope, um, and that's where it's getting that sort of background information from. Um, okay, um, so let's move on to a different instrument and see how it's different there and similar. Okay. So we'll go to the Serum device. All right, so I'll get Serum up. And let's listen to this by default. Sort of sounds similar to that wavetable when we first launched it. And we're gonna do a similar thing here. So here's my envelopes, and here's my LFOs. I've already set this LFO to a sine wave, but again, you can come in here and make it a square wave and other things. See, there's the square, just like we had in the wavetable. Let's set it back to the sine wave again. Okay, now let's do some modulation. So, if I wanted the uh, envelope here to um, mess with the cutoff frequency, um, I can drag this over and it will apply it that way. And it happens one time. Let's turn that down a little there. Adjust it. Okay. 
All right. Um, what if I had set that to an LFO instead of the envelope? So if I right click here, I can remove that modulation and instead we'll put on the LFO. So here we go. Oh, there it goes. It's doing a very similar thing. However, I can change the rate of this. And do some very interesting things with this LFO that the envelope won't be able to do. So this is some of the differences, like I said, between envelopes and LFOs. The LFO can kind of get you some, you know, really sound design um, capability. Let's turn that slower again. All right, great. Um, and in this application or plugin, you can have multiple LFOs. This one's a um, triangle here, and um, I can set that to something different. Like, um, let's put that on the resonance. I can give it a little less, so it's not quite as powerful. There it goes. I can set that rate to slower as well. Okay, so envelopes and LFOs, they have similarities and differences, and you sort of need both in order to um, create a good sound or make a sound design you really want. And the third one here is sort of interesting because this didn't have those parameters, but what I did was is in Ableton, there are LFOs and envelopes that are separate. And what you need to do is map them to whatever, just like we sort of mapped the Serum device to whatever, we're just gonna map this LFO to whatever we wanna modulate. So if I hit map, uh, well, I turn it on. And uh, again, we can set this to whatever rate we want, you know, faster or slower. Um, and let's say we set this to the cutoff, but we have to map this to the cutoff. There we go. You can see it moving there now. Um, actually, we never really heard what it sounded like without it, but um, there it goes. It's really nice. This instrument defaulted, let's see, to somewhere around three something. So this is how it sounded originally. I should have let you know that. But turning this on and then mapping this. What's nice about these LFOs that come separate in Ableton is I can map up to eight um, parameters at one time. So I could also map, let's say, the resonance using the same in, um, LFO instrument here. And you see it moving there. I can also change the percentage so it doesn't modulate it quite as much. So it just see it's moving just a little bit back and forth. Whereas this one's zero to 100, so it's it's going like, you know, a lot further in its mod modulation. Uh, let's listen to that. Changing the depth will get it all the way to like 100%. Okay, so also, same thing. If I turn on my envelope here, and remember, this is just gonna happen once when the note strikes, I can sort of change that 
attack a bit so it comes in a little slower but I need to map that to something so I'm gonna go ahead and map it to the attack here and that way it will modulate that envelope attack see there it goes every time a note is struck okay so that is sort of how you use envelopes and LFOs in synthesizers. Okay, I hope you got a great idea today on that explanation of LFOs and um, envelopes and I hope to see you guys on the next one thank you very much for watching DJ Bergstar out